again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Thank you for tuning in. Um, this week, rather than just talk about the craziness in Manchester, because there's plenty of it, um, <laughs> we have a special guest, um, Lynn, and I'm going to pronounce... Albrecht. Albrecht. I always want to say Albright, and I just got corrected on that. Albrecht um, joins us. She is here to talk to us um, about a in my mind, a crazy situation um, involving her son and uh, criminal justice reform and how crazy that is if we thought things in Manchester were crazy. Criminal justice is in so many ways so very, very broken. I noticed one little tidbit. I don't know if you caught it on, um, I think it was yesterday's newspaper. There was a quote from our county attorney, who's the head prosecutor for our county, talking about bail reform. And I get that there's issues with bail reform. I don't think it was supposed to be a catch and release program. I think it was supposed to say that if you're poor, you can't be kept in jail just because you're poor. Um, so there's obviously problems there. But he said in the paper um, that these, it, he was talking about opioid, you know, the drug problem. And he said, bail isn't just to make sure that you don't flee. It's to make sure that you don't continue to break the law and that um, the victims of the, and families of you know that have lost people in the opioid crisis deserve justice from law enforcement and something. And I was just like, uh, okay, that's not how this works. No <laughs> one gets justice from law enforcement. First of all, that is not what law enforcement does. And I'm sorry, bail's only purpose is to make sure you don't flee. Because, you know, we used to have this presumption in this country of that innocence. innocence until proven I, I, guilty. I but found I, that very you know, hard. Apparently to... that's gone by the wayside, so, too. that being said, <laughs> hi. Hello. Thanks for Welcome joining us. Lynn. Thanks for yeah. being in Manchester, of it's course. Great um, to be here. We do have a tie-in with Manchester because President Trump will be coming Tuesday. Tuesday. No, yep, not Tuesday. The 10th, the 10th of the February. The 10th, so like two weeks from yesterday. Yes. Correct. And right before the primary, of course, yeah. the primary is on uh, the 11th, yeah. and uh, people will be coming out, I'm sure, mostly on the Democratic yeah. side to yeah. to um, to vote. But, you know, you have been organizing these rallies, right? Across. Why don't you, let's yeah. start with just sort of in a nutshell what the story is. Who yeah. is your son? Why, you know, why are you here? Okay, the bottom line, and Tammy really summed it up before the show, is that my son Ross was given a double life sentence plus 40 years without the possibility of parole for all non-violent charges. He's a first time offender. It was for something he did on a computer when he was 26 years old. Um, he, this is for his involvement in the Silk Road website. It was an open market website based on libertarian ideals mm -hmm. and um, basically allowed buyers and sellers to exchange what they chose as long as it didn't hurt a third party. So there was no child pornography, there was no stolen property, there was no um, violent you know, services, but drugs were permitted. Mostly, commonly, most commonly exchanged was user amounts of marijuana. And uh, as I say, he was 26 years old, he was not accused of selling drugs, he, was, um, it, he got a double life sentence without parole, that means dying in prison for a platform he created and put on the web. At so 20, it's basically at, like a, a eBay or a Facebook, it's very right? Much like I mean, eBay. it's a, a it's a platform where mm -hmm. there's an exchange, and we know. I mean, eBay. <laughs> well, and Facebook sold. It came out in Congress that Facebook has sold hundred times more drugs, or Facebook hasn't, but people using people Facebook, using right. Facebook same thing, have facilitated drug way sales, more right. drug sales, and in a six months than the Silk Road ever did. Well, in and the I, whole time. my takeaway, like we said before the show was. All that aside, yes. whether or not he facilitated drug sales, whether or not drug sales are right or wrong, whether or not, whether or not, there's a million whether or nots. How does an individual get two life sentences plus 40 years for not killing somebody? <laughs> because there's people who've been convicted of murder in New Hampshire, violent murders. Well, all, who are all, all murders are violent. Well, no, but I'm saying like <laughs> awful murder, you know, like, right, not, like not manslaughter, not like Right. heinous murder you yep. know i guess it's like the the hate crime because you know attacking somebody because something else is not really hateful um <laughs> but you know what i mean like really bad people and they get out or rapists or you know child Kidnappers, molesters child and things that actually do yeah. you know cause mm -hmm. direct harm to another yes. individual terrorists, we don't put, we terrorists don't, get less right right <laughs> they do. and they it do. just seems totally insane but that does it doesn't actually surprise me because i have 
I have a lot of um, lack of faith in our criminal justice system for a variety of reasons, I think. And and isn't it true, Lynn, that the, um, I mean, first of all, the judge in this case, so so there was a slightly political aspect to I all of this. Uh, Ross was arrested in California, in San Francisco, where he was uh, living at the time, but he was somehow moved to New York um, under the auspices of Schumer, who wanted to, um, I don't know, have this show trial, I guess, in, in New York. And then uh, there was a judge who was appointed also by Schumer, and she seemed to really have, have it in. You know, she talked in her sentencing and stuff. She would talk about his libertarian philosophy, how they needed to make an example of this guy, right? So I got the impression in, in watching, amongst other things, that great program you guys put together called Railroaded, because it's a complex case. There are lots of aspects Very. and stuff. <laughs> so if people are interested, I highly recommend going to it's freerust.org, right? Yeah. Um, and they, they have a, a, a breakdown of the case. It's called Railroaded. I think it's six parts or eight parts. Mm -hmm. And um, and everything in that is actually footnoted out, so you can you know double check the sources yeah. and stuff. But the judge um, actually said, um, one, they weren't allowed to, and correct me if I'm wrong with any of these details, mm -hmm. but um, he wasn't allowed to bring up his philosophy, Correct. the reasons why he built the site. And it was partly a harm reduction in a free market test model, right? Like he was idealistic and he-, he And he was 26. Yeah. I'm just yeah, talking, was, like, look, we're not he, talking about a 45 year old idealistic person who's th who might- Know better? Slow we down. know about <laughs> these 20 somethings, they, you know, well, they, 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 they get, you know, look, well, you're he was passionate about freedom. He yeah. was very involved in the Ron Paul campaign. He was, he, and, and a key thing about the po political aspect was he saw the um, potential for monetary freedom through Bitcoin, which yeah, no which one had really much heard of that, that at the time. And this website only allowed Bitcoin to be used as the means of exchange. So um, that got the attention of hmm. the financial powers. And that's where Schumer came in because he was on the banking committee, on the Senate Finance Committee, and called for the takedown of Bitcoin and the Silk Road, and they were after someone. Now, if you get delve further into it, there's a lot of reason to believe that there were many people running the site, et cetera. There's a lot of complications, so we won't there, get right? into that. But it was um, the biggest drug seller on the site who actually sold drugs, because Ross was never accused of actually selling drugs, got 10 years. So wow. you can kind of get an idea of the um, unfairness and the disparity and uh, how it really is political. It's not about drugs. So I don't think. I think it was about getting in, having an example. Somebody had, an somebody example. was going down. Right, yes. Well, they, they wanted... like these high profile cases, right? Where yeah. they can say, okay, we've made an example of someone. I we mean, I remember match. when that happened, you know, d a double life sentence without the chance of parole plus the 40 years, which sometimes I'm like, wow, well, like, well, what is that What's even? that vote, right, okay. just in case? Two centuries, you know? that's what he got, two right. centuries. You know, and, and for once again, nonviolent first time offender, you know, we can't lose sight of that no. when we talk yeah, about no the, criminal history, yeah. the, the justice system being broken, that's it. But it's also broken on the political level because people are, being made examples of. Yeah, they right. were like, we want to stop cryptocurrencies, we want to end Bitcoin before it takes off, and we don't true. want true free markets because that threatens you know, the status quo right. and, and the status quo and the politics and the politicians who are in that game are making their money with their rackets, yep. right? Well, let me just quote the judge at sentencing because she said, she said, we know you started the site for philosophical reasons, not to be a drug kingpin, not to be Anything, a criminal, right? for philosophical reasons. And I just don't know it's a philosophy you've left behind. She called the, and the philosophy is one of free markets um, and, you know. And when will you denounce you know, your, and, your philosophy? And exactly. And if you don't denounce your philosophy, I'm putting you in a cage for the, to die. Forever. And um, she called the philosophy troubling and dangerous. Now, this should alarm everyone. Because we should not be put in prison to die for our philosophy, no matter what it is. We have a First Amendment. We should be able to have a philosophy. Right. Now, yeah, and she said it. And it's right there in the tra transcript. So this is what we've come to. This is the judge recommended by Chuck Schumer, appointed by Barack Obama. And, um, you know, and the lead prosecutor, by the way, is Preet Bharara, who was fired by Trump, but who um, was Schumer's, is Schumer's right-hand man. So 
there was a lot of coziness in this in this case. Um, and it was about an idea. It was the idea that was so threatening, and we should well, not. I mean, I, I mean the little bit that. that I've read. I mean, he's been in prison for six years, seven, seven he's years his, now. He's into and his seventh he's year. He's really, uh, you know, I, I don't know how hard it is to not be a model prisoner when you're in a cage, but well, no, he, he is doing. He's, he's going about. He's going out of, above and beyond what he needs to do, to, and he's helping other people. Totally and, is. You Always know. has the whole time. And so, and, I mean, mm -hmm. he's obviously not, you know, and, the, yeah. you know, he's not the schlep of society, you know. No, no this, no, is, this a is just a kid. kid. This is a smart, he, intelligent person who I I don't even know did anything wrong, but we, whatever. But he doesn't deserve to die in a federal prison. So, so the taxpayer has paid enough to keep Ross, keep us safe from my son. From, from so his philosophy. Never, so he would never <laughs> harm, he's a very compassionate, actually very peaceful person who would never harm anyone. We've paid enough. Okay. And so, um, just so that for the listeners back home who may not know everything about the case, so so he, he his trial was heard, um, there was an appeal that was submitted to the Supreme Court. That appeal, First the Second Circuit, then the Supreme Court, yeah. And and so the appeal has now been turned down, as I understand it, right, to the Supreme Court. So really the last sort of um, option. avenue or option that we have to, to to right this wrong, which is truly a wrong, yeah. right? You know, let's say even time served at this stage seems yeah. fair to me. Absolutely. Is, is this notion, if we can get in front of a, a president to get a presidential pardon. Definitely. So why don't you maybe tell folks back home about uh, the rally that's coming up and then we can play the clip uh, from a previous yeah, rally. Yeah, yeah. So my, my whole intent now is to get President Trump's attention about this case because not only for Ross, it sets a horrible precedent it does. and puts us all in peril, really, to have this kind of sentence. That should not be happening in our in our country. But um, yes, uh, we have. First of all, we have an online petition. You can go to freeross.org/petition or just write to freeross.org. There's a banner. We have over a quarter of a million people who agree with us here that this needs to be corrected. That this sentence is absolutely wrong over a quarter of a million people, please go and sign it and share it. Um, and also, Free Raw supporters are coming forward at um, President Trump's rallies with signs, Free Raw, not protesting Trump, but get trying to get his attention. And it started right here in Manchester. And um, actually, we can. there's a um, clip that we can see, um, maybe hear from one of them right now, and then I can wrap it and, up. Um and, and uh, basically, there's a, a lot of supporters of Ross Ulbricht here in New Hampshire. So, and and Donald Trump only lost New Hampshire by a few thousand votes. I think th three or four thousand votes, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, if basically, if Trump pardons Ross Ulbricht, it's very likely that a lot of us single issue voters here in New Hampshire will, will will vote for Trump, who wouldn't otherwise. So, I think that Trump could win New Hampshire by uh, by pardoning Ross Ulbricht, and he could piss off a lot of his enemies, like Free Barrara and Chuck Schumer. So, I think it's a win-win for Trump. So, so if he doesn't pardon him, are you not going to vote for him? I, uh, if he doesn't pardon him, I personally probably won't vote at all. I, w I won't vote for anybody. But if he does pardon him, I'm going to register to vote here in New Hampshire, which is where I live, and uh, and vote for Trump as a single issue voter. Yes, absolutely. All right, you heard it, Trump. Yeah. Pardon Ross. Free Ross. Pardon Ross. Clemency for Ross, please. Double life sentence for. Yeah, it it is. I mean. You, you, we run out of options. That, that I mean, we have there are. It's not like there are no options along the way. But if you can't, if you can't grab onto it, if you, you know, I mean, if a judge just says no, well, what the heck's that? You know, you just give up and live, you know, spend have your son stay in, in prison forever. And I've I'm political. I know that's shocking to people. <laughs> um, I've thought the same thing. That to me, it's a no brainer for Trump. I. I and maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's an ult maybe there's a plan. I don't know. I just think that, um, is it, is it a pardon or is it commuting it's a, it's the sentence? It's a In this it's case, commuting it's, the sentence. it's just correcting a horrible right, sentence. Right. We're if not they, saying If, if Trump would, pardon. would, um, commute yeah. his sentence, um, and like you said, time served, I, I think that says a lot for, not only to benefit your son, yes. um, says a lot about the, that we do have a problem with our criminal justice system, which I think anybody who takes the time to stop and actually think about it can realize. And it would say a lot about um, 
the principles or the core beliefs of the president himself. I think he's, you know, he's made some things that, um, you know, saying he's going to bring people home from the Middle East for for our, those of us who don't want to be in endless wars, that was a big that was a big step to make people go, well, geez, I didn't vote for him last time, but I might vote for him this time. I think your son's case is another one of those instances. Um, and like we said, Trump will be back in two weeks um, with, I believe, Mike Pence um, on the eve of the New Hampshire primary. So, you know, if you want to come out with a free Ross sign, there's your chance. And, and I think people will be gathering from around 4 o'clock. I think we're starting on the... Uh, on the west side, uh, maybe at that uh, across from the gas station where AFP's office is yeah, on, yeah, Granite on Granite Street. Street. At the AFP offices. Yeah, use that as sort of a loading uh, area and then possibly walk over. Of course, yeah. some of it's contingent on what's happening with the weather. Yeah. And well, and they've that. already, I mean, even, even not that this has anything to do with this, but they already are talking about what's going to be closed Right. From Monday to Wednesday that week. Yeah, because, that surprised me. Well, I was like, is that really necessary? Well, and I don't understand. Um, I mean, we've had presidential election primaries in New Hampshire numerous times. Why is this so much different? I mean, we didn't used to close Elm Street. We used to have, like, events on Elm Street the day before the primary. People manage. I mean, it's nice to let people have the heads up that traffic could be slow on Elm Street because all the media sets up right. uh, in, the, in the Stanton Plaza and all that stuff. But I don't know. And I, I mean, I realized for the rally, they should close, you know, just like they did last time. They closed, I think, from Auburn to Granite because it's right in front of the arena. So, okay, that makes sense. And maybe the, you know, for security reasons, the street's right around it. But, I mean, it's just an election. <laughs> it's not yeah. that different than one from four years ago. So, Lynn, uh, tell us a little bit about, like, what Ross is like. Like, you know, what kind of person is he? Like, you, you know, you're his mom, obviously. I'm going to assume you're a fan. Um, but, you know, he, he sounds like he was a really, he is a really cool guy. Well, you know, he's a really nice person. I know, it's, <laughs> I know I'm his mom. But there's a hundred letters on our website um, that are by, written by people who actually know him mm -hmm. who um, uh, say, well, these were to the judge saying, please give him the minimum. He is not a criminal. He is right. not dangerous. He is actually an amazing person who is very compassionate. And they write about how much he's helped them. He's, he has a real heart for people. And that's what was behind. His intentions behind this whole thing were good. You know, whether, you know, we can argue the site and all of that. Yep, yep. And I understand. But the intentions were good. Because part of the idea, I think, or as I understood it with Silk Road, was was this notion of harm reduction, right? So all of us know that the war on drugs is an abject failure. We need to do something else. And this was literally a something else, right? You know, when, when I go up to the state house and to testify on bills and, you know, we talk about the war on drugs, people will say, well, you know, it's uh, it, marijuana is a gateway drug. And it's like, you know, and it's like, well, I mean, that, that theory has been debunked. But even if it was, it's because you're forcing people to deal with sort of scaly right. characters, right? right? Like no one's, you know. No one buys no gin on the corner anymore. Street corner, it no just one's doesn't going happen. Blind, you know, so we know that the problem with the the war on drugs and the problem with the system is the prohibition behind it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you and and this is what Silk Road to some extent did, and of course it wasn't just drugs on the website, not at all. No. But but it was basically putting willing buyers and willing sellers to together, right? And one of the things um, that I read about that I thought, wow, that's really cool, is it was actually, uh, there was a rating system. Mm -hmm. So people could actually say, don't buy from this person because they're selling you oregano. Right. <laughs> you know, or, or these are dangerous. stolen bicycles right. or dangerous or, you know, whatever it was. Um, so, so it was really set up philosophically to be like, how could we create a free market that would have the right checks and balances because it's reputation based because you know we're we're using this means of exchange um, and the non-aggression principle, which was sort of right. his do you no know, harm, no force, and nothing that used force. Right, or which is created you know, a victim. Right. Right, and, and that really, you know, the non-aggression principle is really at the heart of, of libertarian right. philosophy, right? You know, we're, we're, we, get a, we get a bad rap, but, you know, at the heart of it, we're saying don't right. do any harm, right? Like, you know, right. don't I don't do hurt something. you, right. live yeah. and let live, I don't hurt you, you don't hurt me, you know, everything's I, know. I don't know why everybody thinks that, that 
limited to yeah. just libertarian. Like I'm always like, really, is that just like a libertarian thing? Because I thought that was like the, isn't that the do un, the golden rule? The golden rule. The golden rule. So exactly. so that's libertarian. The golden rule yeah. is libertarian. I yeah. just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't hurt people. Don't take their stuff. Right. 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 And, that's kind of you know. You know, and the <laughs> don't take their stuff is the part where we quibble, right? Because, well, no you stolen know, property was on. Yeah. Well, no. No. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, takes like someone stuff. like oh. me who will be like uh, taxation, uh, taxation, is <laughs> taxation is theft. So you know, I feel don't like take my, don't take my money. <laughs> don't, don't take my stuff. Exactly. So he has a degree from Texas? Two uh, degrees, he I has, think. Well, he has an undergrad degree in physics. He's not a computer programmer, which I just had today a computer programmer tell me. I, I was shocked to hear that. And I'm like, yeah, no, he, he's not. And there's tons of questions and indications that there were lots of people involved in this, but Ross took the rap for everyone. But in any case, he was more, from my, what I can tell, the creator of the idea, okay, which is the most dangerous person, of course. <laughs> and, well, uh, obviously, philosophy part. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he was—he was a physics. He graduated from Texas University of Texas physics, and then went on to get his master's in material science. And it's all science. Again, not computer programming. Not at all. It's all hmm. science. And then he um, got all excited about economics and about the Austrian economics yeah. <laughs> and von Mises and all that. And he had a scholarship on his way to Cornell for his PhD in um, material science. And he said, Mom, I'm just not passionate about it anymore. And I'm like, oh, my God. No, no, no. God. But, uh, you know, he, he decided to go pursue what he'd pursued. And he's also yeah. uh, uh, passionate about the outdoors. I think for yes, me, you yes. know, I follow so the, sad the free Ross um, – Facebook posts and and maybe in the past year he's actually been able to more directly communicate. Um, you know, yeah. people take messages. There's a Twitter mm -hmm. account. You know, if people mm -hmm. are on Twitter yeah. and they want to follow along, but one of the ones that really, you know, when I see the posts that talk about, you know, just being able to get that sliver of sunlight, yeah. which you is know, crazy. Because, because the other thing, folks, and and that people need to understand, it's not just like you're the criminal justice system is broken but <laughs> but prisons are an awful yep. place like these are really really gross terrible cold metal like everything about it is dehumanizing and yeah, and true. just <laughs> genuinely awful right like the clang i always right. think of the clang of it yep. you know and so that idea of you're not allowed to be, you know, outside, you can't really see trees, like just that that dehumanizing aspect of it. Right. So right. I think when people think about stuff and you're like, especially people who, who veer more towards the super punitive, you know, there, there's just a class well, of people, people who are like, you that, must be punished. Well, and we, it's we, like, they should go to jail for that. And I'm like, really? They should be locked up for that? Really? You know, and, and so I, I just they make want, a lot of money from people in prison. Well, they make yeah, a lot of money. Right? One thing I want, before we get off the subject of who Ross is, he's written a lot of essays, and one of them I think really shows who he is, and it's called Five Keys to Inner Strength I Learned in Five Years in Prison. And it's very, very inspiring. And, you know, some of those keys are gratitude, yep. patience, um, Oh, I can just so many things that he's taking the high road that he is really he meditates he meditates well, I mean, he I prays can't even, you, he, I can't even imagine what else like if you don't that's the difference people there's people in prison who figure out that I have to I, de I have to find this within me because yeah. it no, is just me got, and yeah. then there's the you know lunatics are out stabbing each other in prison you know and yeah and then people who just give up they're so depressed yep. and they have no hope and their families desert them you know it's really a very sad thing well then also with the criminal justice in the prisons um there there's this trend in america where they also separate they try to move you it's a purpose from your program from your to move you you know a few states over yep. so that they destroy that familial contact right they make it harder and harder i mean i know you've moved two or three times uh, now to three yeah to, <laughs> yeah. to uh, you know to um stay in proximity stay, stay close so i can visit yeah, yeah because he, i felt feel he really needs that lifeline to the outside world and normal yeah. people and uh but so many people well it's hard for families you know yep. they they it's hard to do that well i think that's something else that you know Besides the fact that your son has to live in a prison, I mean, you're punished as well. Spend a lot of so, time in there. So you're like, <laughs> you've got a lifetime sentence yeah, of being without your son 
for a nonviolent crime because of a website yeah. and a philosophy. Yeah, families are doing time too, for yeah. sure. And and look, over 60% of, of people in prison are nonviolent yep. offenders who have way too long sentences. Yep. I mean, yeah, people make mistakes. They can do restitution. They can. We could have a better system. But I believe, it's obvious to me, that it's profiting government it's also shredding our rights, so it's increasing government power. Yes. And um, in terms of the drug war and how they, they sentence people. And um, we should all be concerned about it because you don't have to be for drugs to be against the drug war. Right. And you right. don't have to be for, you know, not protecting society to be against how the criminal justice system is working right now because it's, uh, it's un-American. It really is. And Ross's, Ross's sentence is a violation of the Eighth Amendment of... Cruel, no cruel or unusual punishment. Right. Yes. It's extremely unusual uh, two, and it's two extremely centuries cruel. Two seems a bit yes. well, over and the even, top. You know, well. I mean, even the UN can get things right once well, in a while, yeah. but, you know, they came out and they, uh, I mean, yeah. the various human watch groups, people have said that li uh, life sentence without the chance of parole is cruel and unusual yes, punishment. It, it doesn't withhold or withstand like the Geneva Convention. Yep. Like it's truly torture, it right? Is. Because you also you have take no... away someone's like inner hope, right? Yes. So, you know, when Lynn and I talk, um, I always circle it back to Nelson Mandela because that's sort of my frame of reference, right? So, you know, back in South Africa, and, uh, because I believe Ross is a political prisoner. I mean, the judge said, I put you in jail because of your philosophy. Right. I'm punishing you for this belief in free markets, free people, free exchange. And, um, and so, you know, I always keep that glimmer of hope because, you know, when yep. we were in the 80s in South Africa, no one thought Nelson Mandela, would, he got a life sentence right. and everyone was like, he's never going to get out. And we know he did. That's right. There's so, always, I, I, no, there, I have to believe in humanity and people. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means people have to go to freeross.org and sign the petition. And, come out to uh, the, come the, out to, to, please come to the, rally. the rallies. Uh, Even just for a little while, yep. get your picture taken with a spread, sign that matters. Spread the word that this is something that maybe more people should look at and care you know, about care and, about and you know and help us help Lynn get her son back that's right please help me <laughs> I need help that's all we really have um if you're yeah, around you. in New Hampshire looking for something want to um hear about good things um Liberty Forum will be happening this coming weekend it, it, you can find and I'll be speaking I'll be speaking and liberty dot liberty forum dot oh, yeah. org I think it is or just google NH Liberty Forum. Uh, that's this weekend down at, uh, oh, I can't even think, the near Marriott the down near the airport. <laughs> Anyways, we're out of time. Uh, we'll be back next week. It'll be the last show before the primary. Um, stay warm, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Peace out, guys.